Eileen, you got married at an early age. How did that affect your life and your poetry? Like, I would never say um, that getting married at 17. You were still only 17? Yeah, my mother had a sign for me. Um, but I, people always thought I got pregnant, and that was why I got married. That was not why I got married, ever. Um, I had a plan. I mean, um, you know, we always laugh that one of my poems is called Lessons from Margaret Mitchell. But that, that it's serious. Um, Scarlett O'Hara. She was 17, with a 17-inch waist, as I recall. Yeah, well, yeah. well Scarlett <laughs> wanted to save the plantation. And um, we, we were in Southwest Philly as kids, and we moved to Harrowtown. And I wanted to, you know, uh, I love that house. I still love that house. I have pictures of it. And there was a poem from Sarah Teasdale. There will be stars over the house forever. Aww. There will be stars forever while we sleep. And so, you know, Dad moved out, left ten dollars on the table, and uh, Mom was drinking badly by then. And so I knew it was going to be trouble, you know. And I was fifteen, sixteen, sixteen years old, I guess. And I, I had a job, and I was working after school. Um, I'd go to school and then go down to the deli and work the deli till about midnight, walk home, and um, get up in the morning for school. And uh, I was doing that from 10th grade, I guess. And giving her the paycheck and not realizing that she wasn't paying the rent or oh, couldn't pay the rent it for or, drinking. yeah, whatever, oh. you know. And you know what? It sounds horrible and, I, and it's like sacrilegious to talk about my mother like that in a way because of what an amazing human being she is. Yeah. But anyway, <clears throat> I, I, um, I knew if I got married, she would go to New York. My grandmother would, um, you know, put her in a... Uh, dry out, you know, right. and uh, everything would work, you know, because we had no heat for two yeah. winters. Two winters, no heat in that house. Mm. You could go, ah, and there was steam. My little sister burned her hair backing up in front of the stove for, um, she had hair down to her waist, trying mm. to keep warm mm. in the mornings or whatever. So it was like, okay, there's got to be a solution here, and, you know, going with the wind did it. It was like scarlet, you know, does what she's got to do to, to, you know. Yeah, get, that's get to, right. That is what that's she it. Did. She has yeah. to save the plantation. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that was positive. So that was kind of what it was. Too. Yeah. yeah. And, and was that heroine. combined to this love of this house and what where I was at the time, um, you know, it was just like I can't lose this house, you know. Well we can't lose this house. So uh -huh. that was that's, that's kind of where that came yeah. from. I was, every poet has a darkness and then when I say it we wallow in things, that is that we allow ourselves to be touched by things that are difficult to deal with. Um, where a lot of people, I think, try to make that go away. And then you look back and you, you do a lot of self-examination. And I think that's what, um, that's where poetry is like on the therapeutic end. You just have to make sure that you're talking universally, that other people feel whatever it is that their darkness is, whatever piece that they have to deal with, they have to find a way of dealing with theirs too. Um, and I think poets get a lot of respect because of that. You know, or they should.